Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to the Joy Business Report. Coming up in this edition, Bank of Ghana hit hard at exporters failing to repatriate proceeds, warning that sanctions will be applied after the 60 days grace period. Also in this bulletin, the central bank has set end of December 2025 as deadline for all commercial banks to fully recapitalize to new levels. And a year after the domestic debt exchange program shows, banks have been slow in recovering from the impact of the exercise. We'll hear from economist and political risk analyst Dr. Thierry Champon. These and many more shortly. For choosing us, I am Pius Koju Baka to our very first story. The Bank of Ghana has hit hard at exporters who failed to repatriate a fraction of their proceeds to help maintain stability of Ghana's foreign exchange. The bank also warned that a 60-day grace period given exporters will always be enforced to, en to check abuse. The central bank has entreated these exporters to embrace the bank's letter of commitment documents to facilitate their export business. Chief Manager in charge of Foreign Global Transfer and Remittance at the Bank of Ghana, Eric Hammond, said the bank is in collaboration with the security agencies to ensure exporters comply with the rules and regulations. He was speaking at a sensitization workshop on the Bank of Ghana letter of commitment requirement for the repatriation of export proceeds. The system has been designed in such a way that uh, exporters are given on the average 60 day period within which to repatriate. You know, the 60 day period is not cast in iron. There is an inbuilt flexibility. We know that there are some customers, there are some exporters, they export purely for cash. And uh, you know, their proceeds come to them within a very short period of time. Others too, they will have to export for their you know, client or customer to sell the goods before the proceeds are repatriated. So we took all those into account and they came out with an average of 60 day mandatory period. Eric Hammond is the chief manager in charge of foreign global transfer and remittance at the Bank of Ghana. Still on the Bank of Ghana, it has indicated that it is expecting all the commercial banks to fully recapitalize to new levels by end of December 2025. Commercial banks in September this year submitted their proposed recapitalization plans, which have been approved by the Bank of Ghana. The move has been influenced by some deterioration of the accounts and finances of the banks due to the domestic debt exchange program. Dr. N.S. Addison is governor of the Bank of Ghana. All 23 banks have submitted recapitalization plans. The Banking Supervision Department and ourselves, we have reviewed all of these plans and we find them credible and we, we are quite hopeful that within the next two years, the, most of the banks would have fully recapitalized uh, and be able to meet the capital adequacy thresholds without reliefs. Right now, they are meeting those thresholds with the regulatory reliefs, but in the next two years, we expect that if the they implement the plans which have been approved, they will be able to meet the capital adequacy ratios without relief. Dr. Ernest Addison is governor of the Bank of Ghana. Political risk analyst and economist Dr. Thierry Champong has indicated that a year on, banks have recorded a slow recovery from the domestic debt exchange program. According to him, the banks have faced liquidity challenges and despite the measures implemented by government to cushion the banks, full recovery has remained a huge challenge. He spoke on PM Express. The economic growth, uh, the, the recovery being relatively slower than we should uh, be, have been expecting. Um, we've seen, of course, the impact on the on the banking and the financial sector, and even on credit provision. So you look at uh, paragraph 117 of page 29 of the budget, and the government on, uh, says that quote that uh, outstanding credit to private and public sectors declined sharply during the period uh, under review due to 
increased risk aversion of banks, partly induced by the impact of the domestic debt exchange program on the bank's, you know, balance sheet. So that is the trade-off that people have had to go with. Dr. Thieu Champong is an economist and also political risk analyst. Moving on to some other stories, government has assured the Ghana Association of Restructuring and Insolvency Advisors, Garia, of support in the implementation of the corporate insolvency law. The law seeks to hold professionals to high standards and ensure that the integrity of insolvency processes are maintained to protect the interests of all stakeholders, including as creditors, debtors, and the public. Speaking on behalf of President Ikufu Adwa, the third presidential fund raising denial awards night, Chief of Staff Akusia Frimosel Paris said, government is committed to law to help make and enforce good corporate governance. Which will discuss the corporate insolvency bill, which was undergoing review and consideration by the parliamentary committee. Fast forward to today and we find ourselves having celebrated the passage of the Corporate Insolvency and Restructuring Act 2020, Act 1015. A law that fills a gaping hole in our legal framework, providing opportunities for distressed business and businesses amid the challenges brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic. Chief of Staff, Akosia Frimase Opare. Players within the construction industry have been urged to collaborate with the public sector to ensure proper risk management. According to the Chief Executive Officer for Infinity Build Group, SNM Tagoto, there is the need for professionals to implement various policies within the space to drive growth. He spoke to Joy Business at a nationwide affordable housing in smart, sustainable satellite cities, communities and villages conference. For so long, we've been sitting back saying government should do this, government should do that. We've been complaining. But architects have a skill for settlements planning where we use Ghana's housing population census data to design um, settlements. Now we want that to happen so that uh, people's issues with houses without toilets, houses without water, houses without electricity, it all brings a lot of suffering and it even makes them poorer. Sinam Tagbuto is the Chief Executive Officer for Infinity Build Group. You're still listening to the Joy Business Report. In today's episode of Food Chain, we take a look at cattle rearing. Although all parts of the cow or bull is productive, however in Ghana, the trade focuses on meat production. My colleague Emma Davis visited some ranches in the central region to understand the business of herdsmen. <laughs> Time for them to go to the grazing. That's why they are making this sound. Saliki Mohammed Ibrahim is a cattle farmer. He says cattle farming is a generational business. Cattle farming, this is our nomadic family, Fulani. It's there for them like a tradition. They are growing their cattle for so many purposes, not only for selling to their butchers. Sometimes they sell them for their needy, buying clothes, buying food, medicine, and whatever. According to him, the increase in human settlements has reduced the grazing fields for cattle. This, he explains, is a cause of most of the conflicts between crop farmers and herdsmen. What they're supposed to get, they are not getting because there's not much of grass and they are facing challenges. Here where we are is coastal area between uh, Futu and Gomua and Aguna. Here we don't have much of rain. The rain season, we got three heavy rain. After that, there's no rain here. During dry season, it's where we are having challenges. When there's no water, there's no grass. That what is bringing problem about uh, farms and sometimes conflict between the crop farmers and the cattle farmers. The open grazing system, which we have been with for years, cannot be sustained. The best grounds for grazing is the best grounds for farming. So you find out that that is the same place we all run into, as well as there are no demarcated grazing reserves. So we think that until we have the full intensive, like other countries, but before that, we have the animals, we can get the land. However, the technical aspect of it has to come from the technicians. Imam Hanifi Sunde, a cattle rearer who doubles as president of the Ghana National Association of Cattle Farmers, says there are many untapped opportunities in the sector, but they have resorted to the traditional modus operandi because they do not get technical assistance. So I can just say for beef, because the leather aspect too, we don't take it serious because the leather most of the times 
you know, it's called Wele, and I don't know any company in Ghana today using the leather for any good purposes. However, we all know that the leather is something very important that is used for belt, for shoes, for bags. It's not being utilized well, the skin. Fatima Mahmoudou, who makes cheese, properly known as Wagashi, explains the process. We first of all put the milk on fire for it to get heated. Afterwards, you pound this stick, add salt to it, mix it with the milk, and sieve it in this basket. So about 10 to 15 minutes or 20 minutes, and it will get ready for you to put it in the basket backwards, then it will form into this shape and turn it into your rubber. It's white, but some do cook it with another leaf that is used for wati, for it to become brown. You can fry it. As of 2021, the world had about 1.4 billion cattle with 841 million tons of milk consumed and 71 million tons of beef. Most cattle farmers across the globe have modernized their operations. Yet in Ghana, this field is mostly dependent on open field activities. It is evident that Ghana needs to catch up with the rest of the world in this sector. And food chain airs every Saturday at 6 p.m. on the Joy News Channel. That's it for the Joy Business Report. Before we go, let me tell you about the EcoBank Salary Account. The EcoBank Salary Account is a special account designed for all workers of all income brackets desire of receiving their salary through EcoBank. With the EcoBank Salary Account, you are guaranteed all the benefits of a normal savings or current account plus many more. EcoBank Salary Account gives workers free life insurance cover of up to 10,000 cities, 24-7 access to cash and e-banking services, internet and mobile banking services, high interest on savings, no minimum balance, ability to save through the EcoBank Save as you spend, a unique feature that helps customers to save and invest. Remember, the insurance policy covers death, permanent or temporary disability, critical illness, hospitalization, retrenchment, and more. Savings or current account holders at EcoBank do not have to close the existing accounts to enjoy the numerous benefits of the EcoBank salary account. Just ask your brand to switch your existing account to the EcoBank salary account. Non-EcoBank account holders should approach any EcoBank branch and ask for the salary um, EcoBank salary account. Switch your salary account today and enjoy amazing benefits at EcoBank. Call EcoBank to free on 0800 003 225 whenever, wherever. For further details, EcoBank, the Pan-African Bank. I am Pius Kujubaka. Thanks so much for your company. Ignition is next with Sami Forsen. Do enjoy.